Hey Slippery Gypsies, this is Winter Blooded and I'm going to show you about reptiles and adventuring and we're just going to have a mad majestic adventure together. So I got a few uh, new babies to show off so I'll do them shortly. I'm also pairing up a couple of my um, Anteresia to get ready for the mating season and to hibernate. So um, I'll go into detail with them in just a moment. Alright, so this is Eugene. Here's a nice big male coastal carpet python. And you'll find them everywhere around southeast Queensland, going up to Queensland. Um, they do go down a little bit, but not too far. But as you see, he is super hungry and ready to feed. Um, he just heard his, uh, heard his door open and is already, he's like, feed me, feed me. But, um, I don't actually have any rats for him right now, but what I'm trying to do is um, clean him because there's some poopers. You gotta clean up that poopers for him. So I'm trying to, um, we'll see, because he, he does get quite cage defensive, especially when he's hungry. Um, but um, I'm just gonna sneak in here. He can strike quite far, um, but I'm just gonna sneak in here and I grab this poopers. Because he needs to. Get a clean cage. Just throw that over here. Boom. Alright. Hey buddy. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna feed you this weekend, alright? So um I feed um him uh extra large rats, um jumbo rats, I think they call them these days. Um but yeah, I'm gonna feed him I feed him two jumbo rats uh, a fortnight, which is quite an overkill actually. Um but he deserves to be nice and uh, fat. He's uh, quite, he's quite a few years old. I'm not as sure, Tyler. Only just got him. Um, probably going on a few months now. And um, he's actually really tame. Like um, I take him out the back and walk him around, and he's fine once he's out. But I've just been uh, hooking him out um, because he's just a little bit uh, cage defensive, and I don't know his temperament too well because he's pretty new to my collection but he, he is bloody beautiful moving on all right oh there's more poop so not everything's fun and games holding reptiles so having reptiles sorry you have to get in there and clean out the poopers this is a jag um she's she's beautiful um temperament is more of a jungle python um, than the Murray Darling that's mixed with. Like she is absolutely gorgeous and she is, um, just grab these delicious little poops. And I'll throw them straight in the bin. Bloop. And then, um, but yeah, so, um, uh, the guy I got her off, uh, it was the same guy that I got Eugene off. And, um, uh, he, he just, uh, lost, uh, lost time and, uh, couldn't, uh, hold them anymore and, um, they just became a bit flighty and a bit uh, cage defensive. So I'm just trying to um, change that, hopefully, we'll see. But look at the colors on, she is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I've, what I've been doing, cause I'm uh, training up to do venomous, uh, my venomous, to own my venomous. Um, I just uh, grab a hook and I just hook them out. So then they're not so cage defensive. They're just, um, like they know that they're not getting fed, if you know what I mean. So um, I'll, I'll just hook her out, have a little bit of a play, see how she's going. I did feed her last week. Um, I actually record everything that I feed. Um, so that is a chart, you can't see it, I've got to get more lights, but that's a chart. It tells you when you shed, when I've cleaned the enclosures and when they've eaten. Um, it's just something that I like uh, keeping track of just so I know each snake um, and how well they're doing. So, um, I'm just going to hook her out, see what kind of mood she's in. She's alright, she seems alright. She's actually not that bad, I might just grab her. Um, but um, she does, she, she does um, just start striking at me. She's um a, oh she's hissing you can hear her hissing she's not sure what's going on but look at her she is beautiful yeah so she's a bit angry um, 
as I said, Jags, Jags are known for some aggression um, as well. The so jungles are too. I need to put down this um, camera. But um, yeah, she's flighty. See how flighty she is? So when you get up close to her, she gets even more flighty. Um, and that just told me, ah, she's wrapping. All right, darling. All right. All right. Okay. All right. You can go back in your home then. All right. So, yeah, as you can see, she's just really flighty and she just really wants to run away. And to me, that just means that she hasn't been held that often. So she needs a little bit more attention, um, which I have been uh, slowly giving it to her. Um, as I've got a fair bit of them, um, I um, give them... I try to hold everyone at least once a week for a decent session and then um, I uh, feed them once or twice a week depending on the babies or the older ones and whatnot. but um, yeah. So I do get them out and I do interact with them quite a fair bit. Um, these guys, these two here are just um, a little bit of troublemakers because um, they're new and they're a bit uh, like just flighty and haven't been handled for a while. So. Um, they're a bit more a pain in the bum. Awesome though, but all right, on to the next one. I'll just show you. So this is uh, one of my Xanthic um, Lacketa pythons, and uh, she is, uh, well, I actually got her off the same breeders as I got my other babies, but um, she is about 18 months old, I think they said. Um, she is very, oh, see, she's coming out. She's like, oh, food. Oh, she's shed. All right, so give me two seconds. I'm gonna have to put this down and uh, see how she's going. Uh, wait up. I, I need a stand for this. Uh, all right, wait up. Put you there. And, um, see if that will work. Um, she is so black-headed pythons, right? They're um, very food orientated. So every time, every time I open that door, she feels like she's gonna just get fed. She's always just looking for food and food because they actually digest their food a lot quicker than uh, mostly car carpets and other pythons as well. So, uh, so that's another thing. So yeah, because I do feed her just out of the cage, um, she, she's expecting food half the time. So I do use my trusty little hook and I give her a bit of a feel and then I get her out. And she has shed, so I'll get that out anyway. Here we go. Hey, it's okay. You're not getting food. You're coming out to play. It's okay. You're not getting food. You're coming out to play. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come on. Be okay now. Um, I haven't had too much problems with her. I'll bring her over. But she also could be quite hungry. But um, if you look at her, she is gorgeous. Last thing I want her to do is um, latch onto my bloody finger. She can latch onto my arm, that's fine. But a finger? Not so much, no? But she's beautiful. Look at her. Beautiful. I'll just grab out a shed. And I gotta clean up some more poopers. Alright, alright, alright. I get it, I get it. Alright, this is a shed. It's relatively still together. Um, but, alright, I'll, I'll throw that out. I don't need any more. Then do I? I'm going to go to the Alright. Uh, Grab some poop, grab some poop out of your cage. Poop in. Oh. More poop. We're gonna need to get you some more shit. Alright. Poopus annihilated. Uh. 
So, um, yeah, these guys, um, black-headed python. So there's actually a couple of variants of black-headed python. Um, there is uh, your Dejara and your... Um, oh, I can't remember. One's in Queensland and one's more... Um, look at her. She's beautiful. Um, one's in Queensland and... Um, I'll throw it back in. Oh. Oh, 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 there you go. Um. Yeah, so um, black-headed pythons are found basically Queen, uh, top of Queensland all the way to the Cairns, basically. I don't know, it's just all the top of Australia where it's a bit warmer and um, a bit nicer for them because they are a very uh, hot, hot animal. Um, they don't only live in desert or anything like that. They do live in scrublands and stuff like that as well, which I do have some bedding instead for where they sleep. Because um, I've heard, um, I've heard, I don't, I don't, I've heard about um, if they sleep in sand, it could like uh, form form something in their um, their bums, and uh, it gets a real fam and. Uh, not very good and can cause serious issues and problems so um, so I try to make at least if I'm going to use sand at least half an enclosure uh, will be another sub, sub substrate um, but yeah so they're pretty cool um, that is my female and she is about 18 months old I'm pretty sure um, and then I've also got a male a little male boy. <laughs> so, this is a little male and he is cute. Look at him. Isn't he cute? Don't you reckon he's pretty cute? Um, he was actually, he was actually growing like double. I've um, fed him. He was tiny. He's about as he was as big as the other girl that I'm just about to show you too. So um, these guys also aren't uh, climbers so much. Uh, so they will climb, obviously. All snakes will climb, but I mean, like, just they don't belong in the um, in the trees and stuff where some of your jungles and your carpets would prefer to be in your trees. Um, so these guys would rather be on the ground um, and in rocky areas and stuff like that. Obviously. As I said, you would find them in trees, but it'd be very, very unlikely. Um, and uh, yeah, but yeah, he's growing really well. Um, he's got a nice uh, pattern to him too. So eventually, hopefully I'll get these guys to breed in a couple of years time. That's That would be really awesome. To just see if I can produce some more Xanthix. So these guys also are um, rather difficult. Uh, Breeds, Fuzzy, um, because they're also reptile eaters. So these guys will actually eat other reptiles and each other. So the problem is knowing that they're not hungry and that they're looking for a mate and then putting them together. And then if they're not, goodbye male or the smaller one will probably get eaten. So you gotta be um, very careful about that. Um, I don't know the tricks of the trade yet, but I've got, um, some close friends and uh, breeders that are going to give me some tips. Um, but we'll go into more of that another time. I'll show you um, an, a fresher baby. Um, there you go. This is the little, another little girl, and she is tiny. And um, see, she's a lot smaller. And um, this is about the same size as I got the last one. And um, they're actually eating and doing everything really well. She just shed, and she's really cool too. So cause she's got um, so she's got a lot more color in her. Um, she's just got her on her pattern. It's a lot more like dense and thick, uh, and which is pretty cool. So it's going to throw out some different stuff, which is I'm pretty happy with. Um, and she's also got lots of pink in her. She did just um, shed, and she's probably looking for some food. Um, she can probably just see the camera as a big heat source right now. So, like, ooh, smash that. Um, but yeah, so that's the little girl. So that's the three Xanthic blackheads. 
And they're very cool. Look at her taste in the air. We just gonna quickly clean her enclosure too. And another little shed. So she's shed. So that's awesome. That's always good to see. Um, means they're growing and eating well. Alright, now you want to see some, uh, some a little bit more fun. These guys are ready to go. Straight off the bat, they're like, oh yeah, I'll smash you, you dog. This is um, uh, Olive Python, an albino Olive Python, and um, he is probably looking for some food right now, but um, he does, he has, he has tagged me a couple times. Yeah, he doesn't like me right now. All right, mate, just wait. I just want to touch you. And they actually launch so far. Look how, look how, look how high he is right now. But yeah, they actually launch so far. And like, it's not that they hurt or anything like that. I just don't like get getting smashed by all my snakes all the time. So I just um, try to hold them. As I said, I'm trying to tame them so they know that, um, try and tame so they know that, um, uh, that when I'm hooking them, they're not getting fed. So they're not going to be thinking about food at all. Huh? So yeah, this guy's really young. He got, um, well, same age as the other little blackhead, but, um, he got born around Christmas time as well. And this is... An albino olive python. These guys will get up to four meters long, <laughs> which is going to be crazy, and as thick as my thigh. And um, they're actually the second biggest. Um, they're actually the second biggest uh, snake we have in Australia, and he's just amazing. But um, he's actually a little bit more friendly than um, his his female friend so look at him he's just so just like tasting the air wondering what's going on he's like <laughs> he's not quite relaxed is he he just um doesn't quite know yet supposedly they uh do calm down with age and mass so when they're getting bigger it's got to start to calm down a bit right now he thinks everything is a threat because they're just so small but um he he does he does warm up after a while like he is now and he does warm in and just I uh, start playing for him and he's actually a really nice snake it's just um the initial getting out of the containers and stuff um I am gonna upgrade his enclosures soon I was just um keeping him nice and contained for a while just make him feel like um he's not free and run around it might be easier to um tame him all right another one this is his female friend, and she is normally bloody psychotic. Getting her out is freaking fun. Every time she will lunge her body so quickly and so far, she will jump. She's actually doing really well right now. Normally, she's lunging out at me, and she's just freaking her whole body. I gotta give her a mad clean. Um, she's, that's probably why she's like, oh yeah, I'll come out. I'll come out. I'll come here. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna clean our cage. But yeah, so this is what normally an olive python would look like. Um, nice big white lips. And, um, nice and goldy olive color. And, um, they are just absolutely gorgeous snakes. And they're actually like, they're, it feels like their scales are a lot smaller. And they're just, I don't know, almost silky. But, um, yeah. She's beautiful. Um, she's actually behaving really well. But um, as I said, they all behave really well until you're trying to get them out of their enclosure. So yeah, it's just, um, it's, a, it's a hard mix. If anyone got any suggestions about how to um, stop them from being so cage defensive, that would be nice. I know there's, a, I've, I've read about a couple of things and a couple of ideas, but like, if you have any ideas that actually work, um, that you've done yourself or whatever, um, leave a comment. But um, yeah, they um, they uh, they just all because I do feed them out of the door. 
in each enclosure, they're all just like, oh, that's food. That's food. He's coming to feed me. So I, I'm hooking them. But as I said, I'm trying to do my um, venomous. I'm trying to do my venomous. Um, I'm trying to own some venomous uh, so I can get on to uh, demonstrating hopefully in the future. And um, uh, so hook training isn't too bad for me because I can. Um, I, I'm going to have to hook out all my venomous all the time anyway to clean their enclosures and whatnot. Um, so it's good. It's good practice for me to uh, use the hooks all the time. I'll just put it back and give her a quick clean. <clears throat> all right, Tom, go back in your enclosure. So let's give it a quick swap over. Um, as I said, these are only temporary enclosures. Um, I, uh, the, I've had these snakes for what? Not even a month, I don't think. Yeah. So um, they're, they're only in there just for a short term. Um, so I can get to know them. They get to know me. Also, it's a little bit of quarantining because um, uh, I don't like mixing straight into my whole reptile room um, with quarantine because uh, there is some really nasties out there that can uh, wipe out full, in, full setups and just destroy people. So I've uh, quarantined for a little while and then I'll um, I get them into a bigger, nice enclosure like the rest of them. Um, uh, I will. Uh. Right, so I'm just going to quickly turn on this uh, light quickly just so you can see them. Uh, um, this is a wheat belt and uh, marble. So I've got uh, a nice big wheat belt female um, and a male marble. And um, uh, I'm going to try to uh, breed them this season. Um, where so they're just cooling down now um and i've put them in there to just say good day um so they get used to each other and they're compatible and they pair um they might do a couple of locks now but um probably won't be the cause of any babies um but i'm just gonna take him out put him back in take him out put him back in um just to keep them nice and rowdy and ready to go um what else oh we've got Got an albino Darwin python. Uh, I'll get him out too. Ah. Oh, there he is. Oh, I'm not going to get him out now. He's up there. And up. He's up there. It's pretty beautiful. He's going on about 80 months as well. Um, and then I've also got. Um, what else? I've also got, oh, I've also got Bo. I've got Bo, he's my lace monitor. I've been spending probably about a week now doing up this enclosure outside and stuff, so I'll take you out there next time. Um, and we're also gonna, um, we're also gonna go on adventure soon, take you out adventure, go see if we can find some uh, reptiles out in the wild. Um, yeah, but yeah, so that's, um, they're my babies at the moment. Um, obviously, there's going to be more and more and more, um, and I'm going to get my venomous soon, and all that kind of stuff. So that's very exciting for me um, to get back into um, my 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 hobby. So I'm very excited for that. But yeah, that's my collection at the moment. And um, if you guys like reptiles and adventuring and doing cool stuff. Um, hang around check out winter blooded um, and I'm gonna start off probably on Facebook and then go into the YouTube but I'll, uh, I'll probably get get some more stuff happening uh, before I uh, dwell into the YouTube world um, but yeah like and subscribe or like and love and you see how this goes guys thanks for paying attention um, I've got I've got a few other little secrets that I'll show you next time um, but, uh, yeah, thank you. Sweet guys, so just remember, remember who you are, go back to your roots, follow the dreams and love and everything that you have from when you were little, and um, you'll just find happiness within yourself. Stay happy, stay beautiful. Winter blood.